Today I would like to speak about aretology. What is it? It is the science of virtue. What is a virtue? A deified quality in metaphysics of ethics, for example. It is a reasonably, intellectually derived quality, attribute, characteristics that we use for guidance in life, in our conduct. In other words, it's not something that is conditioned or socialized. It is something that we learn on our very own experience. And therefore, I see it as good, benevolent, effective. We apply it and incorporate it in our life as self-aware human beings. Therefore, we look towards the effect that a certain virtue or attributes or quality brings. And as we experience the effects, we see what good or evil might be within it, what right or wrong might be within it. It is completely amoral. It is ethical. So, I've conjured a set of, let's say, virtues that guided me in my magical path and anti-virtues that hindered me from acquiring what I wanted to. So, let me quickly and briefly uh, explain them. So, the main virtue is truth, at least aspiring to truth, attempting to find it, attempting to approximate it, as as human beings we have no access to objective, complete truth. We may try to approximate it in proportions, intervals, harmonies, nearing the consensual truth or the divine truths. But is the deep laws of how the universe works. I know Maat is taken from the Egyptian belief system and as such it is a quality like Heka that is sometimes personified, sometimes it's not, but it's a set of laws and rules how the universe operates and how therefore by observation of men, animals, earth and the divine, a mortal should incorporate those values within his work. So composition, very important. When we compose something, it is proportional and therefore harmonious. We need discipline in order to shape ourselves, our emotions, the jumping monkey of our minds. Therefore, self-control. Inhibitions are necessary in certain cases. And when we lack them, we install new inhibitions. And by being homogeneous with them, we are integral. In other words, we behave in certain manner that is approved by us, by society, and we don't go beyond certain codices that constitutes a man and the character of that person. This sermon is very important, especially in magical business when there's plenty of delusion and illusions. This discerning mind is of prime importance. So to recognize what is for false, what is true, what may be realized, what may be a delusion. Strength is very important because it constitutes our character that we may derive certain paths and aims successfully. It is the perseverance that makes the character. Therefore, equilibrium, balanced paths, the middle way, principles, ethical upbringing is, are very important. Because without principles, without coordinates, we fall apart. That leads to conduct or the way we conduct ourselves with others and with the other side of the magical affairs. Reason. Reason may be used for both good and evil purposes, although in the intellectual sense of the divine intellect, it is always used for the good purpose. Now, laws. Uh, we need to acknowledge that there are certain laws that are existent in the universe and the discovery of truth or approximation of truth is by and large discovery of the laws that operate in the metaphysical realms. Now, proportion, the Pythagorean proportion interval is important in order to discern the proportion and act according to certain means, to master everything through a single mean. Harmony. Harmonia is rebalancing even chaotic, complex adaptive systems and something that is appropriate to the nature of man. Moderation. Everything in moderation, nothing in excess, as in the uh, Oracles of Delphi it was written once, because excess leads to passions and destroys a man's mind. Justice, to be just, is to wait and discern properly according to the virtue acquired. Eudaimonia, 
happiness. That is a Greek virtue that has a lot to do, for example, with the marital happiness or family happiness. Wisdom. Wisdom is the knowledge of causality and instantaneous derivative, instantaneous de deriving of certain action, actions, reactions and so on in every specific environment and circumstances in order to act in a wise manner, therefore creating good effects in total sum. Whether we meet other people and we penetrate their mind, their emotions, their perspective, their worldviews, their beliefs, we try to derive what is best for them measured by their standards. Selflessness. It doesn't mean that we uh, get rid of ourselves. It means basically that we can incorporate more of the world within us in order to have a grander perspective and vista. Laughter, of course, happiness, eudaimonia, laughter that is more laughing with the universe rather than laughing at someone. It is the exposition of joyful demeana. Understanding, very important. Who understands everything, citing Leo Tolstoy, may forgive everything. But we don't forgive fools, we tend to eliminate them. Understanding is the penetrating insight that leads also to wisdom, because without penetrating insight of understanding we cannot understand the patterns and causalities. Now beauty, beauty beyond aesthetics, beauty is the capturing of truth, whether in ugly therapistic things or really beautiful and great. Mercy, Clementia, given to the conquered enemies, after they corrected themselves. Mercy may be, mercy is not given to stronger opponents or people that are foes. Mercy is the prime exposition that we have conquered something and therefore we may be merciful. Now, humaneness, love follows humaneness. Not the other way around. Humaneness is difficult to define, but it is this quality, essence of being a human being, too roughly. Friendship, comitas, is a very important virtue. It is the ability to transparently and honestly deal with people that are your friends, acquaintances and so on. Compassion, it is an active thing. It is not being pitiful or giving pity. It is actively rectifying other people's suffering. Now, and giving them tools to rectify it you, themselves. Agape, Eros, Philia, the diatomic triad of erotic love, friendship, love in comitas, and love that is a catalyst of the Ishtariate or divine streams of fusion, of togetherness, or koinonia, certain community, communitas. Genuinity, what is transparent and genuine with the universe, is always concordant with it, whether it has a demonic nature or a more Agato daimonic one. Now humor, humor and distance, distance towards yourselves and others, towards all these stern stiffniks. I'm a disciplined stern stiffnik myself when it, when I need to be. I'm very disciplined and apodictic and uh, tyrannical even, but I can distance myself from it and therefore derive certain humor and humorous situations from all of it, laughing at myself from time to time and quite often so because this is the learning and the extent of my own stupidity. And uh, after we die, we're just absolute beginners, appearing to a certain book. Now, anti-virtues. Passions destroy a man's mind. Excess destroys a man's mind. Arrogance. Sometimes it is necessary with some world, but by and large it may inflate into rough and uncertain hate or aversion. Insanity. Nobody wants to be insane. Honestly, I've been there. Nobody wants to be insane. You lack control over your mind, inhibitions, emotions and everything else. Perfidy. I may be perfidious at, uh, at times. However, this is this kind of cold hate and malice that pitches about and turns perfidious. It is much worse than little scheming. Non-discernment. As mentioned before, discernment is important. Weakness. In weakness, in meekness, we commit many errors out of fear, so conquering fear is of prime importance. Instability, indiscipline. 
We cannot pursue effectively our causes and effects if we are unstable and undisciplined. Stupidity, foolishness, the worst kind of things, delusions, the gods themselves contained in the vein with stupidity. <coughs> relativity, everything is relative, you can do whatever you like. Well, it is not, but it is also not universalist law in a totalitarian sense. Elicity, chaos. Ordo ab chaos doesn't mean that we dwell on chaos and we can do whatever we want. It means that we carve certain orders out of chaos and if we dwell on chaos we just fall apart and are subject to all forms of unnecessary evil sufferings and delusions. Disproportions in reaction, disproportions in life, injustice. Well, if we are unjust, how can we support ourselves with principles? Lusts, excess again, whether sexual lusts, greedy lusts, whatever, they are leading to the destruction of people in the longer run, the metaphysical destruction of the souls and the ability to develop pneuma or the spirits. Hatred, hatred when it is sublimated may lead to a very strong force used to pacify some demons in the hells. However, as such, when it is more called anger and hatred that is unidirectional, it is simply self-destructive, self-consuming. Ignorance, again stupidity is linked with ignorance, lack of knowledge, lack of realization is leading to plenty of errors. So, self-grasping, when you grasp at your qualities, at your mind, at your body, at your abilities, if you can't let go of it even for a while, then you are creating a feedback loop, a psychosexual pneumatic feedback loop that is imprisoning you in the temporary shell of your mind. Think of vampirism, for example. Confusion, despair, nobody wants to be despaired and despair makes us in a state, thrown into a state of melancholy noir, the Saturnian lead, and we fall headlong into suffering from despair. Terror, if we conquer fear, we no longer feel terror, we no longer feel terror. However, terrorizing and receiving terror is uh, breaking our will and strength. Vengeance, vengeance, retaliation, justice. Is justice vengeance? Vengeance is when we are receiving wounds and we are tormented and want to retaliate if we are strong. So strength may be turned with anger and vengeance into very naughty things. Bestiality. We may write every idyll and bestiality into human nature. However, we are trying to aspire to something more because there is no as bestial an animal as a human being who through civilized forces reaches for bestiality of the weirdest, eeriest, most murdersome of his instincts. Antagonism. We may feel antagonistic at times, but by and large it is an entanglement with hatred and antagonism towards something and we imprison ourselves, ourselves only, not the other party which we are trying to destroy. If we destroy them, oh well. Isolation. If you isolate yourself in a self-grasping tower, you cannot perceive the world. Perspective, again, discernment. Isolation is good for no one. If you are fighting a battle, it is good to support yourself with friends, surround yourself with friends. Unless your strength and you are a monk or an eremite, eremite a hermit arose, allows you to survive it on your own with the help of gods, goddesses, divinities and spirits. Domination. That is enforcing your own vision upon someone else or submitting it. It is necessary at times but it may lead to various, um, let's say, apodictic, tyrannical stances. So use everything with balance and measure. Then again, anger and hatred. Anger is something natural, but to be disciplined means to control your anger when necessary and unleash it when necessary. Delusion, the opposite of a realization. 
Delusion is that when you think that something is true but it may not be and it leads to ignorance and stupidity. Realization is something when you resolve something that reverberates and resonates with the truth or approximation of it. So this is just an example, you can conjure your own. I would like to portray it as a little exercise in aritology. Thank you.